To begin with, as I was telling you earlier, uh, Kamla Bai was uh, probably, as far as my memory serves me, the first documentary I've ever seen. And hence the viewing experience of the film really left a major mark on me and a lot of the work also that I've done and a lot of things I've thought about in life. Uh, what was interesting for me is I watched the film again after 17 years for today. Okay. And the viewing experience was completely different. I saw things which I didn't see, and or, but it was a completely different experience emotionally. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to begin with to asking you that 28 years later, when you see Kamla Bai as a film, it's 28. I think okay, so. Whatever. Is it 28? 91. Yeah. 91. Yeah. I think it's 28 years. So it's almost three decades. Yeah. When you watch Kamla Bai now as a film, not the person Kamla Bai, the film. What do you feel and what is your emotional experience like or intellectual experience? Oh, I only respond to it emotionally. I love it. I love every frame of it. And I can recall the light. I can recall the time of day we shot a sequence. You know, it, it's sort of, I just feel immense affection and gratitude to her because I think she, um, I was really struggling. It was my first film and uh, I wasn't sure how to, do anything, how to even shoot an interview, for instance. So uh, she was very, very patient. And uh, yeah, I just love the film. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you watch it more as a director or as an editor? Oh, as a filmmaker. As a filmmaker. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I can separate the two, but uh, I also don't watch it very often, mm. uh, Shivani. Mm -hmm. uh, I just happened to see it last week because there was a screening in. Uh, Delhi mm. and before that I saw it in February and I, I don't think I'd seen it for 10 years before mm. that so you know it's just it just so happens that there's been three screenings this year but you know other than that I'm, I don't travel with the film or, yeah uh, I think one of the most uh, interesting things for me is the relationship uh, come no, but before you ask me a question <laughs> I want to ask you yeah. so how is the how are the two, I'll come, uh, your I'll come. screenings, yeah. how have the two experiences been different? I'll come to it. Okay. So, but first I wanted okay. to ask you this because, yeah. For, yeah. So, um, the relationship Kamla Bai builds with the camera and hence with you um, is, um, it's, it's very powerful and it is not subject to the film and the filmmaker. Like I feel like in today's world, what we call giving characters agency. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to know how that happened. It was your first film and she was, she hadn't been on stage for a long time. She is of course a natural performer. But when you started shooting with her, clearly a relationship built in a way that she was not subject to the camera and she was not your subject. I mean, I think that's the part of this film that she never feels like your subject. Could you talk about how you built that relationship? Or even in hindsight, what you feel went right? OK, so uh, um, I actually chanced upon an interview with her in Cinema Vision. I mean, um, at that time, in 88, uh, in the 80s, uh, there'd be long chunks of unemployment. And I just wanted to read up about film history. There was a journal called Cinema Vision that Siddharth Kak used to bring out. And uh, so I was reading that and I got very drawn to silent cinema. I wanted to just meet people in that era. And so Pune's not far from Bombay. I used to work in Bombay in those days and uh, I just decided to take a train and go there. So I got in touch with a friend, Rani Budra, who had worked on Cinema Vision and I said, can you get me Kamla Bhai's address, et cetera, et cetera. So Rani, Rekha Sabnes and I went, we took a train and we went. And I was really thinking of um, interviewing her uh, for a book. I mean, I wanted to do a book. It was like a research project. And when we came back, so we had, we hung out with her the whole day and we had a lot of fun. We played cards and she cheated and <laughs> she was sort of, you know, then we asked all these questions about her childhood and this and that. And she was, you know, very lively, very relaxed. And she lived completely alone. So she was also very happy to have people drop in on her and recognize her you know, her place in history, and so she was sort of full of all that. 
So when we were coming back in the train, I remember um, Rani going on and on about how it has to be a film and you have to make a film. And I'm like, I'm not a filmmaker, I'm an editor. And I'm not making a film. And anyway, it just went on. You have to make a film, you have to make this film, something, something, and whatever. Then I got paid for a film I'd edited, um, Manjira Datta's um, Sacrifice of Babalal Bhuya. I got 30,000 rupees. And it was a lot of money. And I just said, chalo, you know, might as well, like, maybe we should just shoot some interviews with her. So we bought some stock, and I asked Ranjan to come down from Calcutta. And so, um, I mean, this is not answering your question directly. It's going to be a bit of a, you know, whatever. So the only way that I knew how to shoot an interview was based on what I had edited, right? So it was like um, too short or, you know, the camera facing the person, the camera turned to the person who's asking the questions and so on. So the first day of shooting, Kablave was just sitting in this blouse and petticoat, and like you see her in most of the film. And uh, I said, you're sitting like this? You know, we're shooting? And, uh, you know, comb your hair, dress up, wear a sari. And she says, I can't wear a sari, it's too heavy. And I said, you know, what nonsense, we're shooting. And so we pulled out a sari. She just possesses those Which three the trunks. First, the first shot. It's, that's the sari? The, the printed thing. one, the printed one, yeah. So, yeah, she, so she combed her hair. She tied a neat little ponytail and then, um, the f you know, the living room or whatever, the drawing room, whatever, the, f the room, the hall, what, what they call in Bombay, the hall, was very bare and there were all these trophies sitting on top of a cupboard. So I brought them down and uh, there was some bookshelf sort of thing, some shelf in another room. And we brought the trophies and we put them, you know, like background and sort of to her. And uh, then we set up this, interview and Rick asks her a question and she answers and she stops and she's waiting for the cue and I'm like uh, that's not the way you normally talk and you know why, why don't you just talk she says how can I talk you make me sit like this you're asking me questions and I'll only answer what you ask me so it really made me stop and think about what I had done I mean sort of anyway floundered along but I didn't keep any of her uh, play with the crew we didn't shoot that at all. Then I went in, so this was 88. Then we went in 89 and we shot some close-ups. And I put together a rough cut. And um, then I did a, yeah, I put together a rough cut and showed it to some friends. Uh, and there was this silence, absolutely. And then everyone said, oh, chalo bar chalte hai and let's have a drink. And I'm like, you've just seen my rough cut, you know, can you talk about it? And they were like, you know, it's terrible. You have to do something. It's dead. It's not at all what you have been, you know, talking about. Talking about. Like the kind of person that you've, you know, you've been saying she is doesn't come through at all. So, um, yeah, that's when I realized that I was actually switching off the camera when I should have kept it rolling. And uh, so I'd never seen a film that had used that kind of play and that kind of interaction. So for me also it was a bit of a, um, you know, we'll see when we come to the editing table, but right now I've got to shoot it. And uh, then we showed it, I did another rough cut and I showed it around and it worked, it seemed to work. In fact, a lot of people said it's too much cutism. So we, you know, knocked some Fair of that, enough. yeah, yeah, a little bit, but um, yeah. So it seemed to work, you know, that, that spontaneity and the kind of, just that, you know, that sense of play that she has. We were kids. I was 30. She was 88. Mm -hmm. There was no way she was going to be, yeah, you know, definitely. worried about a camera or worried about a crew or anything, you know. She wasn't. But she was also very respectful. Mm -hmm. You know, we were the crew mm -hmm. at the same time. It was a very funny sort of... So she would say, what time are we starting tomorrow? There was this whole sense of... a. You know, the call time and yeah, yeah, yeah. What did she make of you? There is such an interesting undertone of her relationship with you, uh, which I love, which is about like her, I mean, from, I mean, it moves from marriage advice to her sort of constant, like, it's like she has a private dialogue going with you, which sometimes the camera catches 
what did she make of you as a, as a woman filmmaker as a, an artist I know of her. Her. no I as a sense i mean i don't know I don't, you can see what she feels <laughs> it's there i think uh, i th- in retrospect i think uh, she must have been impressed that there was a woman filmmaker and i had an all male crew i had three men uh, on the team and uh, so but apart from that there was just lots of affection she was just deeply affectionate with all of us mm-hmm. and uh, yeah i think we were just i mean i i used to visit her regularly we were, we didn't shoot that often we shot um i think 5 6 days and 3 days and another 7 days so Um, what is it two weeks mm. let's say but um i would meet her three four five times a year because i would just go from bombay to pune so mm. there was this um, and she'd ask me for anything she wanted or you know whatever there was just complete did she watch uh, the film oh yeah yeah of course yeah, what did yeah. she think uh she was very upset that i didn't you know that 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 play acting um the night sequence yeah. where she's So she when she bends her head um she acts the part of the woman who's being questioned and that's where I cut. So she said why didn't you keep that and I said it was becoming too long. So she said who said it was becoming too long? <laughs> so I said you know I had rough cut screenings and everyone just said ke bahut lamba ho raha hai to she said they don't know anything after 45 years I could remember the lines for all three characters and then you choose to cut it So but by then the negative was cut everything was done the film was mixed I'd run out of money I I just I didn't change uh, But I, she I mean the family was okay with the film I was very worried about um, the swear words but mm. uh, they just laughed it off they said she uses worse words so <laughs> you know so don't worry about it the okay so to uh, for me the first viewing experience was actually i was a bit so i was very very drawn by the character and the art of filming a character because it gave me access to this life which for me was very new and it was uh, all those things but the emotional experience uh, and maybe th- because of various things i was going through personally was very terrifying i thought this film when i watched it 17 years ago was about being alone when you're old mm. and and the performance which she was the performativity i thought was coming out of a place of loneliness mm. but this time when i watched it i felt that she was not lonely she was free mm. like there was this immense sense of freedom and which and which is something that like you know we talk about a lot even in friends about how as women as we are growing older you only become freer when you're older so and which is why i think this film is also this this really beautiful meditation on age especially for a woman so could you just talk about that for yeah you absolutely i think so when the first rough cut was shown to my friends um um i i i mean i could see that it was you know this So what attracted me to her initially and the reason why I met her was because she was an early actress mm. but the reason why I was captivated by her and finally chose to film was um her spirit and you know so I wanted the film to be a celebration of old age as well which the first rough cut had completely lacked and overlooked so um so when I you know when I kept this you know the sort of dialogue between us and her and um i think yeah that kind of brings it to the fore and she was they used to live on a farm the whole family together and she had a heart attack and um uh she in fact chose to live in pune after that she said i could have died um, we lived so far away from our hospital and uh, vikram had this flat and she said i'll live there and they were worried that she'd be alone but in fact the door is locked from outside was locked from outside really? and the neighbors had the key so that way they could keep um, a watch on whoever entered the flat but uh, and she used to send this basket from her balcony to the watchman 
and with the money and he would buy her whatever she wanted and so she you know she yeah she worked out a system and she she was very uh, she was very gutsy yeah i think and for all of us uh, it really was the first time that we encountered somebody of that age who was living by herself and perfectly comfortable you know in in an interview i think recently you had also said that it wasn't a, a, yes age but you also learned a lot about cinema and life yeah. while making this film yeah. yeah what would you say she taught you about life well it's just the way she lives yeah to be so free you know she was just she made her own decisions um, she managed yeah she i mean after the film in fact lots of people would want to meet her so a lot of film wala's went from bombay to pune to meet her and so on but before that she was completely alone so she had papers and she had magazines and books and she worked out her yeah this completely she in fact reminded me of humai vyara wala who also <laughs> stopped shooting at 40 acha and then yeah yeah and then grew old with newspapers yeah. alone yeah. in a house yeah. like there was a lot of similarity in this in this in immense gutsiness to yeah yeah, yeah. just open it up to the audience for questions and then i'll ask come back <laughs> yeah yeah well she she used to cook her own meals the bai used to just make chapatis and one day one morning she got up and she said i'm going to make pohe for all of you so we said okay and so after the first day of filming i, I must clarify baby where i really interfered with you know um the second day onwards we just decided if she was sleeping we shoot her sleeping if she was walking or cooking or whatever we just go with the flow and um, so there'd be sometimes when she'd sleep for about 2 3 hours and we just uh, we just wait yeah we, you know is this me is this my my thank you I am overwhelmed by seeing your uh, effort and uh, a great thing what you have documented so far. I am. Uh, I think this is the third uh, thing about the artist. First one is of uh, Bal Gandharva. Accidentally, I was at Pune. I gone for some reserve bank training at uh, College of Agriculture Bank in Pune. Accidentally, it is the centenary year of Bal Gandharva, and I am so lucky to see so many. marathi dramas and everything at pule theater and second one is of our dr gopi virana's theater mm-hmm. it done by bj as you know it and really it is a wonder you have taken me to the down memory of our theoretical golden eras yeah. really wonder because the two have also included that palki's effort to make the movie with uh, female roles played by this alunki and also think how hard she has done and where we, it is a dream for us to see that uh, seen because every time you used to see just a glimpses but you have given a very good picture how tricky will be used and everything you know it's a, i'm hats off to your work the thing is what more i expected is i think you are not able to get what you want to exactly while picture is in you just documented what she was as it is it's just so natural which i appreciated a lot and what i expected much more is about the Yeah, that uh, Natya, Natya Gita, our Angastala Gitas of that age, I expected much more music. Because by that time, all these Kirloskar company, Natya company and everything, they are maintained only because of uh, music. Mm-hmm. With the music only, they have done the victorious plays. Like Raja Arish Chandra, Rosanda, Dushyanta, Shakuntala. I have read so much about that one. Yeah. I really, really want to. It's a hearts off to you, madam. Thanks a lot. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for bringing this film. A uh, few days uh, back, a month in June, I was in FTI, uh, one month appreciation course and all that. So it was great fun again to remind me uh, I'm still part of cinema. <laughs> so I've come all the way from Electronic City just to watch this movie, and I said thank, thank you. you for thank bringing you. this movie. My question would be that, um, like he said, uh, that periods uh, those uh, documentary. uh th- that periods work uh, where you are not able to pick it up from the archives and insert it in the film was my question 
uh, she, her conversation on is beautiful as it is the film is beautiful i was wondering whenever when you are referring to as a, as an artist contribution of the artist itself uh, her work uh, clippings here and there would have i don't know my point would be to like you said would have added more uh, but this is in a she didn't have any photographs there was a big flood in, in, in archives? pune in archives no there are no photographs oh. uh, yeah so there was a flood and uh, all her personal belongings got uh, swept away in that so um whatever i could find in fact a lot of the photographs that you see are actually male actors mm. um you know dressed up I'm as aware, women aware, aware. and uh, it's just to give you a sense of that time really there are none of hers but uh, i like except the idea that one mm. portrait that she is looking at in the beginning this is a film we need to show everybody to celebrate uh, being what they are happy to be what you are like celebrating and that age uh, at this age she is still celebrating she is courageous she herself it's very motivating i mean it's i am i wish to see her if she is alive still there no so, no she died in 97 so sad i am not fortunate you see <laughs> thank you I actually uh, really enjoyed the movie of course but also the portrait of her femininity and it was just felt like it was so different from stereotypical sort of you know how actresses are in the present day of course man shouldn't compare but i wonder if that stems from the fact that there was so much fluidity in the role she played and she was so unabashedly just herself and not sort of constrained by how a woman actress or a woman should be so if you've reflected on that i mean how you've portrayed that femininity of a very unique kind i think i was just portraying her as she is and so that's what she is i wasn't really um i wasn't looking for anything more you know i mean even if i uh, you know the, right in the beginning there is that question of uh, so what brought you to the stage and she says destiny and she's very clear she says either we could have been prostitutes or we could have been with art and culture so we became actresses her mother and her and it you know that was it so she's just put it out there now you know i i do you define yourself as a strong woman and do you define yourself as this and that kya hai wo sawal to mere se hote hi nahi i just i don't i mean i don't even look at people like that so yeah no it's not that it i was i wasn't thinking of yeah but no but uh, even when i was looking for funds for the film for instance um so i approached a lot of women's groups and i had friends uh, working in uh, ngos and uh, their first question would say uh, would be like so how does she see herself and does she has see herself as a pioneer and does she see and she doesn't she didn't have that kind of self consciousness about herself you know and I, i mean i couldn't sort of i couldn't write a proposal presenting her in a way that uh, let's say feminists at that time might have wanted to see protagonists you know i think it's only much later after the film got made that uh, it got picked up by women's groups even and got shown around and they wanted copies but for a long time i think the definition of what a strong woman or some pioneering woman should be had to be articulated in a certain way which which was in my way anyway so and certainly not her so yeah no. yeah 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 she liked it i just said it i just answered her question um the movie was very uh, nice and she is an amazing woman uh, but i also loved the music and i tried to shazam it so that i could probably find it uh, but obviously it did not uh, come up the searches so uh, is there any way we can find the music yeah it's natya sangeet these are all musicals okay. and this is uh, kumar gandharv and khan abdul ghafar khan uh, uh, kareem khan sorry so just uh, you can google that yeah hi no there was no recording at that time yeah i don't have a question uh, after watching it my heart is full so it reminded me of a, a character from this kannada film titi gaddappa you might have seen it so this is like celebration of life so i may be one of the youngest person from the audience 
I really want to watch this every year. <laughs> yeah. Thank after, you. After I'm, seeing our, I'm happy to send you the link. Yeah. You can watch it any time you like. Yeah. So her, hi. So her um, absolute delight at not having daughters. <laughs> uh, did you talk about it further as to why she felt so relieved at not having daughters? No, she's just snapping at us, you know. <laughs> she's just, she's so irritated. And it was just one of those... And you didn't you go know? in further into why she felt that way? She says what she says, and we just left it at that. I think it's just uh, it's just a fun moment. She's expressing some irritation about being questioned too much or pestered too much, and uh, uh, no, I didn't. I don't even know if she really meant it. You know, mm. okay. I, I don't know. Because I mean, it's interesting because she, having spoken so beautifully about having been such a wonderful woman herself in her life and the mm. completion of her life, was yeah. so you know fantastic at why she felt that. I don't think she did actually. I don't yeah. think she felt it really. Okay. She was just telling us to shut up. You <laughs> uh, This is about your frames actually. So I realized and for me one of the most uh, interesting moments in the film was uh, that time where she's like, don't make me crane my neck and, you know, because you're taking a different shot, right? And uh, since this is a very, it's a profile of uh, her life as an actor, as a uh, theater artist, right? And uh, I, I noticed that, you know, you tried not to take a lot of frontal shots. Uh, not, not a lot of frontal shots, like n not just, you know, um, so it's, you know, ev I mean, that roundedness was there in every frame, you know, n not, not uh, except where she was performing, of course. Uh, was that a conscious choice you made at every step that, you know, I want her, um, uh, I mean, to not overpower this, uh, your film with her? Okay, so, um, so uh, a lot of the form um, uh, fell into place because of the kind of restrictions we were working under. So. She doesn't walk very much, and she's sort of, she was really bedridden. So we had to be in that room. And I didn't have money for lights, um, to rent lights or anything. We just had two sun guns, which are very primitive lights, which we used for the night sequence. So we had to use available light. And um, if she's sitting in her bed, um, there's a window right behind her. So if we were going to be frontal, she would be in silhouette for much of the day. So we had to take her at an angle. There's a window to her right as she sits in the bed, and there's a window just behind her. So uh, some of the angles really, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, were determined by the t the time of day that we were filming and where the light was coming from. And, yeah. Any other? Reena, was it difficult for you to edit a film that you had directed? Yeah, well, I, I don't like to edit my own films, for sure. Um, I always uh, like someone else. Um, I, I like hearing what someone else has to say, how they view the material, and I think it kind of enriches the way I start looking at it myself. And there's also, a, you know, there's a lot of exhaustion after a shoot, so... You just want to be free and you want to maybe go shopping or have a haircut or something and <laughs> then come back and see the editor transforming, you know, material. So Smriti was working initially, she was the editor and um, then um, the editing also took a long time, you know, over four years, three years of shooting and, you know, three schedules and four years of editing. So um, in between, I relocated to Delhi and uh, then it became difficult for her. She came twice to Delhi to edit, but she couldn't, so... But by then, I think we'd kind of... Um, she'd let go, and she said, you, you feel your way through it. And then I had friends. I mean, there was Nelita, and there was Samira, and there was Vengelis, and they really helped me, uh, particularly Nelita and Vengelis, really helped me structure the film. I had a, I think, a 100-minute rough cut, 90 to 100 minutes, and I also had... Um, wonderful interviews with her sons. 
So one son was a musician, Lalji, and he lived in his house, and Chandrakant had been visiting her, so um, we'd interviewed him there. And they were fabulous interviews, because then they gave you a sense of the time, of these little boys growing up, watching their mother on stage, and the kind of politics, and the style of acting, and so on and so forth. And uh, at some point, Vengelis told me, and I remember this was, so I, I always needed somebody, you know, to bounce ideas off. And, he said, every time you come to one of the sons, you start looking at her through somebody else's eyes and knock out those interviews. You know, it'll really help the film because then you're with her in her space and with her and seeing her life um, through her eyes. And I said, no, no, such good stuff. And he said, throw it out and see it for yourself. So I did and it really helped. So I always need somebody, I think, I, I need to bounce ideas off, even if they're not working as in, as editors on the project, but uh, I constantly show rough cuts and I, even for films that I edit, I like feedback. And uh, I need to see what's working, what's not. And, sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. So a lot of material got thrown out. So 90 minutes or 100 minutes became 45 minutes. And then there's a point in your editing when you start throwing out material and then you say, where's that sequence? You know, then you know, okay, lock, lock kiya jai, sort of thing, yeah. Actually, I had a uh, follow-up to the earlier question where you said, um, you know, the, the fact that you ended up uh, shooting the way you did was because of the constraints of the location. At that point, would you, if you had no constraints, would you have shot it very differently? Would you have, uh, you know, um, no, I don't think, uh, no, I don't think, I don't think it mattered to me. Uh, and Ranjan's very good with available light. I mean, that's really his plus, even now. And uh, so I was in very good hands in that sense. I don't think I felt that technically the film hasn't, uh, you know, has been hampered. Um, so, no. no. And I don't think we could have lit up the space. I mean, it's impossible. You can't light up the space and then say she might walk from there to there and put on lights and trip over cables and run around hiding cables. You know, it, it couldn't have been possible. Uh, no. No, but you're happy with you. If, if you could have, is that the way you would have liked to have seen it? Uh, would you have liked to have actually, because you wanted her to put a sari on initially. Yeah, so that and was the first day. Yeah. Then I realized what a mistake it was because it really hampered her expression and her style. So then we just dropped everything. We just dropped all artifice all in that way. Yeah, so the trophies went back on top of the cupboard. That bookshelf went back. It had a mirror and comb and Vaseline and, you know, things uh, went back into the room. Yeah, nothing. Then we didn't. Uh, then, like I said, we just filmed her doing whatever she was doing. Yeah. Just a quick <coughs> comment. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. It's not really a question. I just wanted to say thank you for making the film and sharing it with us. I think it's so beautiful to not just connect with the character, like we're used to doing in films and documentaries and various things but also the fact that you can connect with someone who has performed like her performance side as well as who she is as a character. It's just something really beautiful and very, very moving. So thank you very much. Thanks. It is a beautiful film. Thanks. Yeah, I also have only a small comment which is connected to Indu's uh, um, point about uh, the constraints. I, I mean, I think that works really well and maybe at that time many more people were Documentary films, not many were shot uh, with available light and with... No, actually, that's not true, but maybe yeah. in India at least they weren't. Um, I think a lot were. I think once Ranjan came on the scene, um, then, certainly, uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, he hated lights. I think he's still... <laughs> yeah. I Privately, I feel he's still a little like, you know... But partly because of that and partly, I think, a lot to do with your editing, it, it has a very contemporary feel. I mean, it could have been made today, actually. Yeah. I, I really felt that. I mean, I, I enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed... It whenever I saw it uh, 27 or 28 years ago. Thank you, Kata. Sorry? Mm -hmm. Man up, man. Um, okay. Sorry. So. Yeah. 
So I think we are just going to close the audience. And I just want to uh, also close with a comment. It's not a question. Again, in the, <laughs> in the interview that you recently gave, and then when you see the acknowledgments, uh, this is a self-funded documentary. And it's a, it was your first film at that time. And uh, I think it was really amazing how uh, the way people came on board and lent you cameras and money oh, yeah, and completely. so on. I couldn't have done it uh, yeah. without the kind of support I got. So um, I think there's a lot of, um, so like I said, I, I got this money from Manjira and I was like, wow, you know, we can buy stock. So we bought, uh, I think I spent 20,000 on stock and 10,000 was for Ranjan to fly and for all of us to go to Pune and to have food and travel. And so 30,000 we did one schedule, which was, but that was also possible because Anand gave us his camera yeah. and uh, he said, if Ranjan's shooting it, you can have it for free. And uh, we couldn't afford a Nagra. There was no way, nobody had a Nagra to give us. And uh, so Anand said, I have a Walkman. He had this so little- thought it sound on a Walkman. Yeah, a Walkman Pro, which is, wow. and on Chrome cassettes. And it was Suresh's first film and he looked at it and he said, I would never imagine that this would be my first film and this is the gear that I would get. <laughs> and, uh, but having sort of, you know, spoken his uh, sort of whatever, at, you know, sort of made his feelings very clear, he got on with it. And so there's this little mic, like you have with the Walkman, this little really dinky little mic. And we attached it to a bamboo pole and that was his, uh, you know, his boom rod. And um, yeah, that's how we did the sound all through the film. It never changed through the it three It was shedding. recorded on a Walkman. Yeah, it was on a Walkman. It was, uh, we got lights from Tipu and friends would give me bits of magnetic tape. Like, you know, they'd finished, anyone had finished a production would just say, Achha, tumhe ye magnetic tape, tum transfer kar lo apna sound. So I would just join all those little, little bits and we transfer like that. So yeah, I just, my mom gave me a bit of money at the end to, you know, uh, edit. And, no, e edit actually, just, you know, lab costs and things. So I went to Ramesh Prasad and I said, uh, I'm making this film with my own money and I want credit for a year or six months or something I said, I can't remember. So he just said, uh, why would you ever want to make a film with your own money? <laughs> I said, oh, it's not going to be for long, you know. I'll get the money to make it, don't worry. And I, I had the supreme confidence I'd get the money. But in a way, I'm glad I didn't. In fact, I'm very glad I didn't because it gave me the time to make mistakes and to mull over things and to think about, you know, just how to film. And we couldn't also shoot very much because really there wasn't money to buy stock. So the ratio for this film is one is to three. And uh, so before you panned the camera, before you took a shot, you framed, you, you know, you, you checked everything out and uh, then shot. So I think it helped. I think it was great training for uh, being economical and um, yeah, to think, yeah, yeah. But I'm so glad it's easy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I love it. I love to be able to shoot on a phone. Yeah. I think it's so fantastic. I don't care. There's I think a, a film is a film. I really think a film is a film. It has to speak to you. Yeah. It just, okay. uh, Sorry, we have to wrap up. Thank you yeah. so much, Reena. Thank what you, a Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. Thank you.